big hello and welcome. Thank you for joining in. On behalf of the Ashang Desai Center for Leadership and Organization Development, it is a pleasure for me to welcome you all. The Leadership Storyteller Series is yet another marquee initiative at IIM Ahmedabad. This is envisaged to be a platform that brings ideas and insights of renowned experts to bring forth the most interesting and trending leadership issues from a storyteller's lens. And who better to do it for the inaugural session than the inimitable Utkarshini Vashisht, all the way from Hollywood. Utkarshini, as most of you would know, is an LA-based screenwriter. Gangbu Bai Kathiawadi, the closing film of the Berlin International Film Festival, is today being loved by critics and audiences for its exceptional screenplay and dialogues that have actually been banned by her. Utkarshini completed her film schooling in the US and has worked with Sanjay Leela Bhansali as associate director on the super hit film Goliyon Ki Ras Leela Ram Leela. She's also known for writing the hard hitting and powerful Sarabjit, which premiered at the Cannes Film Festival and was long listed for the Oscars. Utkarshini's understanding of global cultures and stories comes from her having lived and worked in the US, India, and the Middle East. She's widely traveled and speaks five languages. And in conversation with her today is our star professor Amit Nantiolyar. Also, just to bring an additional housekeeping issue, Professor Pramila Agarwal, who was supposed to be there also, has run into some last minute emergency at home because of which I'm going to be standing in for Professor Pramila Agarwal today. A warm welcome to you all, our audiences today, and you're all encouraged to post your questions on the Q&A. Welcome to the Leadership Storytellers, Utkarshini. It's a pleasure to have you with us. The stage is all yours. I am very thankful that you uh, to be here with all of you. And uh, I would have loved to have that uh, I am background there that makes it look uh, very uh, legitimate <laughs> what we are doing here. And yes, um, as I was uh, telling my friends and I was telling my family that uh, this has been a long journey, almost uh, 20 years in making. And uh, I'm that typical, um, uh, you know, uh, Desi kid, uh, I'm an engineer. And then it was expected that you do an MBA. I did my rituals of the CAT examination and my mother who will be very happy in, uh, with me being here with all of you here at I am uh, doing this talk. Um, she still has my um, uh, CAT examination mark sheet like saved. She still has kept it because I apparently got like uh, 99.97 percentile in the languages section, but my maths was terrible. <laughs> so obviously I didn't make it in and we should have taken a hint at that time. That's right. Uh, if I'm good in languages, I should have stuck with it, but no, I did go ahead and did my MBA. So um, uh, when the opportunity to do this talk came, I was most excited about two words in this whole conversation, leadership and storytellers. Um, I am a storyteller. That's the life I've chosen for myself. And I have always looked at storytellers like thought leaders. And I feel that's a huge uh, you know, responsibility to, uh, to be telling stories that in some way would craft how people think, would influence uh, their way of uh, looking at the world, uh, would influence in some way, minuscule way, uh, the decision-making. Uh, so yes, that's what really excited me about it. And then I did a little bit of uh, reading up on um, social leadership uh, trying to understand the concept of it. And uh, I understand that better if it is with examples. And then while I was reading all the nine steps, everything, and it's like this totally applies to the life of my lead character, Gangubai. This totally applies to any real life hero that I would look at, that people would look at in any way to emulate. 
that a leader has to first of all create a space a space in which they would stand and then they have to work out the myth like you know i every hero has a myth so i believe that every leader needs to have a we wouldn't call it a myth but the story that they want to tell about them so story about their achievements story about how they reached there anything that makes them common that connects them to common that connects them to common and through common community that the community can look up to them and that does send your uh, thoughts in a spiral like you know um how do we, so that's what i i believe management studies is all about it's all around you you see all these things happening all around you and then you come to this point when you start applying these principles to it it gives a structure to all this uh, normal happenings around you normal people around you normal uh, heroes around you and taking those life lessons you apply them to principles of management and then you end up uh, running huge corporations like google and what not so uh, yeah um storytelling is a tradition is as old as time um uh, as a child i remember when i first time heard this very famous poem about rani lakshmi bai bundelo har bolo ke muh humne suni kahani thi khub ladi mardani wo to jhansi wali rani thi this these lines is two three lines itself tell you about the story telling tradition that this is how the myth of rani lakshmi bai the warrior princess the one who stood up against the britishers who fought for her independence was propagated through the mouths of through the oral story telling tradition and there we erected this heroine this heroine whose name is taken every time we want to uh, exhort the principles of uh, patriotism nationalism uh, standing up for your country as a woman you can do anything so if you talk about those leadership principles we go back to the story she built a reputation i'm, I'm just saying all these terms <laughs> from all the notes that i've read reputation curation so yeah when i had joined my mba studies our professor had said that uh, the most important thing you will learn in your management studies is jargon nice way of thing saying things everyday things and which makes it legit which makes you sound smart <laughs> but it's basically normal life and the lessons you glean from it so yes and i'm um, as i'm a storyteller as i am um, i love to engage with the audiences i love to learn from uh, people and i would uh, love this session to be more about what you have to ask me and whatever information we can share through our uh, conversation so uh, over to you professor and over to you uh, uh, piyush like please ask me and i hope i can answer well yeah um thank you utkarshni for taking time out it's an absolute pleasure here um i love the way you said this the storytelling is from you know from orally it has been conveyed much before we had uh, the letters um uh, now let's get back to the latest uh, you know the movie kangoo bhai uh, in this case uh, how did you come up with this idea that she can be you know she fits into the your idea of a leader somebody who you know you inspires and motivates whole lot of com entire community around see if we first uh, like look at it like how the myth of a hero is generated the mere fact that uh, about 50 years after her existence we still know her name that her story has been written in words put in a book sent out into the world that's the first sign that there is something about her character about her achievements that needs to be told and retold that we would take as a, a first step and then you get into the reading of the story and there you read about this woman uh, who comes from the most normal circumstances like any hero she's thrown into a very difficult situation 
and what differentiates a hero from a common man is the hero would always defeat the circumstances and rise above them uh that's exactly what she did but she did it remaining in her community making her community's problems her own and fighting for them and that's how she built up a reputation mm-hmm. like if we need something to be done she is the person who will go ahead and do it um which gave her like every uh, leader gets like what every leader is striving for is some sort of a social authority so she built up a reputation she got her social authority and then she built on that uh, reputation and authority to do much greater things that is what makes a leader or a hero sustainable and those are all the elements we saw saw in a story but what was the icing on the cake what was the most exciting thing about this story was that she comes from the most forgotten neglected uh, abused cross section of the society is this side of the society that i remember that uh, for the research part of it when we were driving through uh, the lanes of kamathipura just the idea that we would step out of our car and stand there for me i come from a very middle class background my mom is a teacher you know uh, but we come with those uh middle class society hang ups it was very hard for me to just step out on those in those lanes stand amongst these women i am a woman but yes i am i'm embarrassed no i'm not like i'm i'm very human to admit this that i did look down upon them that something that they were doing was not uh proper from a woman of my social standing and background but more and more i delve into their lives i realized that they were heroes each and every one of them were heroes because what i saw in those streets was laughter what i saw in those streets was resilience confidence and we plucked little and little because nothing is known of gangubai except for those 30 page stories and this this one photograph and one putla so we have plucked the characteristics of all these women that we saw in the streets and put into this character and then as cinema blesses us with we were able to make her character this larger than life character and uh, maybe this is part of another question but i would really like to highlight it here that uh, when i wrote the screenplay uh, sanjay sir and i were always discussing like so the movie got kept getting delayed every year because yes this was the biggest question ki kon dekhega like you know it's a prostitute story who's going to sit and watch it but how do we make it uh, appealing to the masses because there is this thing in her story that's something that drives us there's something that makes us smile that something that uplifts us it's, it's an ultimate underdog story so sanjay sir always used to say ki uh, you know we have to infuse it with color with lightness it's like how you give little children medicine thoda honey mein mila ke you know like, like you give it to them and uh the the feminist in me and the art side of me was fighting it nahi nice, sir we have to show the reality of the streets and it's like everything would be real but in a more palatable fashion and he went ahead with his vision we have this colorful bright movie but what it did was it told audiences that we're not preaching to you we're just going to show you a very entertaining story and if you can get something out of it great and now i hear audiences applauding her she they're cheering her they're part of her victories they are looking at her as a leader so this has taught me a little bit more about storytelling that your storytelling in addition to being compelling has to be entertaining it has to hit the right chords it can never be preachy it always has to go down to the level of community it's it's something it's a tale that you would tell your friends not to depress them but to uplift them so that's the difference yeah very well utkarshini thank you very much and i really like when you compare that with the 
humble background that perhaps most of us come from and uh, aren't we all victims of and prisoners of our own stereotypes and prejudices that we carry but when you talk about gangu bai and when you say that it is her actions that kind of inspired others to dream more to learn more to do more and you know to become more and that is perhaps what catapulted her to the position of being a leader i do able to kind of identify for us what are those factors that kind of facilitated her becoming an effective what could be called as a social leader yeah see the first and foremost thing that she uh, did was tell herself and all these other women who were working with her that that's what we are doing this is work if a doctor could be proud of his work a teacher is proud of what they are doing for us they are sex workers so she was one of the pioneers of this thought process of uh not prostitution call us sex workers this is a line of business she put it in the most uh, crudest of terms for her audiences to understand but she was going in a very social element of it we provide a service you pay us for a service you are a customer we are the vendor and we all have to take pride in our business and apna kaam imandari se karo you take pride in it you do it with imandari success will come to you will make money so she bought it down to nuts and bolts and suddenly these women were no longer looking at themselves as victims the victim they were victim of circumstances but not of their work in their work they gained agency that if i do this i'm doing it with pride i look at it as business i do it very well i earn more money that gives me satisfaction that uplifts how i feel about myself and right. you do it to two women you do it to 20 women you do it to 2000 women suddenly you have a community which has a sense of pride in themselves and suddenly this community is able to trace back the source of pride to this one woman who said it is possible and you can do it and i'm showing you how to do it so i think that was a very huge quality of her as a social leadership uh, a very uh, huge social leadership quality of hers that she found her space she found her space in this um, dark hole where these women had suffered for so long doing exactly the thing they're still doing but without having a uh, beautiful nice envelope to put it into without driving any meaning out of it that's what she did okay so uh, that's very interesting i did a couple of things here i mean one thing is said about stigma right i mean a gangu bhai stigmatized comes from a professional to stigmatize and still she could you know overcome all these problems that's one thing and i like to you know uh, pick uh, pick your thoughts on you know what do you think about stigma and the other thing is she's female right um she stigmatized and she is a female working in a very you know uh, desperate context if you are, if you have to say so in the in in this case of the movie context itself um how do you see these things like gender or stigma does it play in terms of becoming a leader uh, does it help does it hinder i mean and how do you think they can overcome you know um i would like to um uh, reply this uh, reply to this question with a little personal uh, insight mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i come from a single parent household uh, my uh, mother left my husband she was a victim of domestic abuse she left my husband before i was even born so she was pregnant with me when she left so i have always grown up not knowing my father but uh, with a mother who in that 80s society would be uh, looked at with the stigma where is the husband she was a 21 year old woman girl i would call her with a child in a new city making a life for herself going out there working amongst the men uh, she built up uh, a school and then she was running a school but she was doing it all in the man's world without a man all alone and i saw like from childhood i saw how she turned this stigma into her strength 
so there were so many times that i would hear uh, people bringing this topic up ki, you know uh, where is the husband and uh, she couldn't even like you know maintain this relationship with the husband like these are the things that you say in indian society it's always the woman's fault aapne kyun nahi manage kiya so you always get to hear this but uh, my mom is sort of a local legend at this point now that any woman who was suffering would come to my mother for inspiration that if she could do it raise a child by herself build a career by herself make all these things happen around herself then we could do it as well i have distinct memories of in the middle of the night uh, women coming and banging on our doors because they've just run away from an abusive husband and i don't know if uh, of course you guys will remember 80s was uh, an early 90s was when we had this spate of dowry deaths you know like uh, cylinders blowing up and my mom always used to laugh ki why does a cylinder always burst or a stove always burst when the bahu is cooking why does it never happen when the mother in law is cooking or the sister in law is cooking why does it decide to do only for the uh, bahu mm-hmm. so yeah she she became a leader in her society by by just doing things by not uh, sitting in a corner and let others provide for her she went out there became a provider for herself became an example and she gained social leadership uh, she gained leadership out of it in the little society that we were in and this is always always inspired me the underdog has always inspired me a woman's ability to rise above so i have i have grown up believing that there is nothing that is impossible for women and when you just and i think this now i'm raising two daughters and this is the thought that i want to give them that if you grow up with this thought and this is very important in a country in terms of gender roles that if you make your girl child grow up with this thought in this environment in this household where she believes that everything is possible that she's never has this to like question her choices is this career right for me is this a boy's career can i go out at this hour is this doable by me if you do not put the seed of doubt uh in your girl child she can achieve anything so i come from that thought process uh, background and i apply that to all my female characters everything and uh, you have seen only uh, two of my movies out and as for writers our work takes a long time to reach the public but most of my work deals with women who are put in impossible situations but i always look at them with the lens that what if she knew in her heart that she could do anything despite the circumstances she is in and the moment you look at that story with that lens everything about it changes everything about your lead character dealing with the problem uh changes so i, I hope i've answered your yes uh, question Thank you so much moment. yeah, yeah. so utkarshini this is very interesting and thank you very much for sharing your own personal story and which is very very inspiring as far as your mother's journey is concerned i am going to be taking this back to where you started from and your own you know leaning in and doing that engineering and mba degree and getting into an mba school and realizing that jargon is what the perhaps the big ticket take away of an mba education is one of the big takeaways that is going to be there so i'm going to be using a bit of jargon where i'm moving slightly away and saying yeah. that very essence of leadership as we are told is that you have to have vision right now to me leadership and learning are almost indispensable to each other so i wonder if you could share with your you know all experiences of writing such powerful stories and having experienced um you know the inspiring women leadership story at home as also otherwise what are those lessons that you think we could imbibe from gangubai's story as a social leader uh first and foremost i think uh like when we saw gangubai's character she 
she refused to let the circumstances define herself. That is something that I've noticed in my mother as well. She refused to let the circumstances decide how her life is going to be. So that is one most uh, important lesson that uh, men, women, anybody else on the spectrum, anybody in a life when you're faced with a difficult circumstance, even as a corporate leader, in any situation, do not let the circumstance tell you what to do. You have to tell yourself what you are capable of doing, what you as an individual would do to handle that situation. Uh, it is above and beyond the circumstances. The circumstances might be uh, telling you that the economy is crashing and uh, the housing market is failing, but then there are these leaders who swoop in and take decisions and end up making money in those times also. Even in the times of COVID, uh, Amazon has gone ahead and <laughs> done huge business. It's like, you know, so they did not let when COVID was hitting everything else. These are the leaders who uh, went above and beyond and said, no, Jeff Bezos does things like this. COVID does not define how Jeff Bezos does things. Jeff Bezos does things how he does. Similarly, Gangubai did things like how she had been raised to do or probably how her head worked in those circumstances. Or maybe a flip came to her. We don't know exactly in her real life what went. What We have tried to keep create circumstances for her, but I believe that this is it, it, it is your mind telling you it might be momentary, it might be... Uh, and built into your character. But when you are faced with this ultimate realization, when Gangu is faced by this ultimate realization that this is going to be my life now, there's no running from here. There's no escape from here. I can either choose to be any one of these women standing against this wall every night calling customers, or I can choose to run this place. And it's possible because there is, somehow Sheila Masi has also reached in this position that she's, running this place right so that is achievable i can do this part then she reaches that position and then she thinks of what's the next thing that i can achieve so i think a leader never stops uh, there is no ceiling for a leader a leader would never rest on their laurels so the first important lesson you do not let circumstances define yourself secondly do not put a ceiling on your ambition or what you can do don't think that this much is enough. You always have to keep striving. There would be another corner, another bend that you have to traverse and reach somewhere. So this is very distinct and thing that we realized in her career that, okay, I have, I'm running a brothel now, but what do I want next? I want to run the entire Kamati Pura. Okay, I'm doing that, but what do I want to do next? So there's an opportunity. A leader always sees opportunity that I am dealing with the man who runs the biggest uh, bootlegging operation in the city. Prohibition time. I have the biggest clientele is coming there. They're sitting ducks there, my sitting clientele. Let me get into this business. So she was always, always looking for an opportunity. I think those are the three most important lessons that uh, her story imparts us. Um, thank you for sharing that. I mean, you know, so one of the things is like, um, it's always good to have these uplifting stories which comes, uh, you know, that cheers us up and uh, we can get beyond the pain and the sacrifice people have gone through it. Uh, but still, you know, uh, some people do struggle. Um, and so if, even if you look at say, and I like to focus on Gangu Bhai, even though I know you have a, a body of work, which is all with very strong, uh, you know, female characters, if you want to get there in a minute, what do you think are the key societal challenges that particularly women need to look out for, you know, when they are asking for help or seeking help and creating that ecosystem or support system around them? Um, what are those challenges they have to be mindful of? And, you know, I would like to answer this question, like, you know, a uh, two pronged fashion. That, that's something that uh, one is my observation what I have felt and specifically uh, in our Indian context that I felt. Um, so I'll come to that later. But the first, uh, just to answer your question directly, I think the societal cha challenges that women specifically uh, 
uh, face is that uh, first of all, uh, they don't believe that they are on an equal footing, that they can demand exactly everything that uh, you were, uh, you should not think twice before uh, demanding. Uh, women sort of feel that them having made so far uh, is a great achievement in itself and we should not be upsetting the apple cart. So, jitna mil raha hai, lelo, dream for it, but without upsetting anyone. And that, I would go back to what I had said earlier, that is just because of the limits with which I, we raise our girls. By telling them from the beginning that all these things are not available for you. Be it because a society is unsafe and it's a parental instinct to protect your child. Be it that uh, a woman is expected to take a larger role in family. And if she's not taking in the family, is suffering because of it. Uh, you feel like, uh, you know, a woman has not done her job well. I feel that it's always, always it's put on a woman that uh, your home and your family is the first and the foremost responsibility for it. And anything else that you look beyond it is secondary. So you always have to treat it as a secondary uh, thing. Uh, which brings me to my um, second uh, thing, which is my observation. And uh, it is that a woman women and and if anybody who's listening to this uh, conversation and is looking uh that what could be a space in which you could turn social leaders i would suggest this to you that uh we have to normalize the concept of family in our work life we indians have been raised for the longest time to believe that your personal and professional should be kept separate. That when you're in a workspace, you cannot say that I am late today because my children needed something. I'm raising two little ones. My little one, my younger one is just nine months old. And I feel like, you know, uh, when I work here in my Western setup, everybody knows that. They ask me if I have a Zoom today in like few hours and I asked it to be pushed by half an hour. I said, I have a childcare issue and it's absolutely fine. But this is a conversation I just cannot have if I'm in my Indian setup. It is somehow immediately assumed that you're not dedicated enough towards your work. Like, why would you even bring up children? You should be handling it. Like, you should never bring your personal thing within your professional uh, things. It takes away a lot of freedom and agency for, from women. They always have to hide it uh, make compromises whereas if they're openly able to discuss that I'm a woman, I'm running a household I've got two kids, I will always have responsibilities but that in no way means that my work would be less than the best, I would always give it the best and as a woman I'm a multitasker, I'm fully capable of doing it but that sort of ownership agency is not given by a society to women in a workspace. We have to have to normalize that. We have to accept it that it's a part of life, that you can come late to work. You would not be considered a slacker. If you're a mom, you have genuine mother issues. You can go home. You do not have to choose. You can do both things best. And we have all these women in this global leadership uh, positions from Indra Nui to, I was just reading yesterday about it, just popped on my screen. And I'm sorry, uh, I've forgotten her name, Xerox's uh, CEO. And uh, she talks about it that I was not there all the time for my children. But whatever time I was there, I was the best. And I don't feel guilty for it and do not make women feel guilty for it, for choosing career over being at the kids' school performances or dances or games. So I just believe that we have to uh, normalize that. That's the biggest, like, at least for me as a professional, that's the biggest challenge in the society i have felt that i have been expected to be at meetings with people so i returned to work when my baby was two weeks old and out of those two weeks i'd spent six days in the hospital so even then i had to return to work in within two weeks because especially in the 
entertainment industry after my first baby nobody would come to me for from for work and i would call up these people what happened about this project and they would say oh but you just had a baby i said i had a baby like i didn't lose my brain or something like i'm not brain dead my brain is working and what i do with my personal life how i take care of my child is my issue you're talking right. to me as a writer deal with me as that like don't make my decisions for me so it was very hard for me to get sarabjeet because of that one year that i i and i didn't even take off i i don't think i've ever stopped working it's just that people start looking at you differently but having said that i would also say that things have completely changed uh, in these years now um, my first kid was in 2014 and now when i have the second baby i have never been busier and honestly i was so afraid after my first experience that i never even told anybody that i was pregnant that i have given birth like after i gave birth a week after i gave birth i told everybody my clients and everybody that oh i've had a baby nobody knew i and i wanted to show them that it doesn't change anything i have delivered all my episodes i've delivered all my film scripts i've done all my work while being pregnant and i gave birth like i was writing on my way to the delivery room but i have done all that and but i say that women in professional setup should not have to feel that pressure is where i would like to the societal challenge that uh, professor that you were highlighting that is something that i would like somebody to look into and normalize that right very well very well karshni and i think the personal angles and the personal challenges and tribulations that you are sharing i can't imagine we are for all the talk that we do on the subject of diversity equity inclusion and uh, others we still discussing living in the century and the times that we living in and you based out of where you based out of and you working in the media and entertainment industry which is supposed to be at the vanguard of some of these things and yet these are the kind of challenges that you yourself have to navigate before you are even able to live a normal life so that is very very inspiring i am now going to be moving with karshini to a slightly different angle and that is the angle i realize that we talking to a storyteller so i do believe very strongly that stories constitute the single most powerful weapon in a leader's arsenal so at some level i guess we're all storytellers and we all live in a network of stories so this i i don't think there is a stronger connection between people than storytelling and this is proven through ages right but i am also reminded of the fact where i read somewhere that the purpose of a storyteller is not to tell you how to think but to give you the questions to think upon so i wanted to ask you if you feel that the storytellers have a responsibility to their audiences with the kind of role models that are presented to them in the context that you've written some of these very very powerful women oriented stories uh i think the responsibility is huge it's immense like uh, uh just the other day that i was probably discussing uh, um in this setup or only that uh, uh i have read my experiments with truth uh, by mahatma gandhi but if ever i try to remember an incident in mahatma gandhi's life my mind automatically takes me to the movie gandhi what all i know about mahatma gandhi's life is from the movie i would believe it to be the ultimate truth because i watched it as a child i watched it as a teenager i watched it multiple times in my life so uh what all i would say anybody who's watched the film the version of mahatma gandhi we know is richard attenborough's version right and because nobody uh none of us in our generation have had the opportunity of seeing him live so we may read his books but the physical representation because cinema as a medium has this huge power that it plays on almost all your senses right it makes you think believe it you're hearing you're watching it's your emotions are going in are uh, creating this visuals for you then every time you close your eyes and try to remember the moment those visuals which have been put in your head come up and those are the ones which inspire you so yes it's very very important and it's a huge responsibility 
that when we tell stories about uh, anybody, any real living person, or whenever we create characters, our characters have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have a responsibility towards them. We have a responsibility towards the society. But having said that, a cinema is a reflection of the society that we live in. Always, always. It's not changed ever. Like even uh, you would go, it, uh, the one extreme of the society would be represented by the avant-garde cinema. The other would be represented by the commercial cinema. But it is the society that we live in and we cannot shy away from that. Of course, it might be magnified to the time 10, what we, where we see on the cinema. But again, the kernel of the truth comes from the society. So uh, that exists, that exists. Uh, in the case of Gangubai also, we made her life colorful. We made it brighter. We gave her these punchy lines. I feel that now when people talk about Gangubai, that's a Gangubai they're going to remember. That's a Gangubai they will have in their head. I don't think many people have read the book, Hussein Zaidi's book, or would know that 30 pages of story. So it's a huge responsibility. Like it scares me. Like when my daughters are of the age and they watch the movie, this is how they're going to relate to Gangubai. So I feel like uh, we have to uh, be uh, very, very uh, determined and clear that uh, that representation honors their memory in a certain way. Uh, we do not make heroes out of villains, but uh, if anybody has any redeeming quality that has to come out. Thanks, Karshini. I mean, this is something which was already on the top of my head when I was talking about, you know, as yeah. storytellers, right? And um, despite all the books and everything out there on the internet, what do you think? The, the movies, the videos, they stay with us. Yeah. Um, you know, they stay with us. And um, what's interesting is over a period of time, I see some change, you know, in terms of the type of movies, the type of stories we are seeing. And um, um, I'm not just saying about a Bollywood or a Hollywood or any of those things, right? Uh, so there was some time, you know, um, I know uh, when it was very clear, if you talk about Gandhi and all, right? The, the, there are heroes, there are villains. The person the, who is on the right side always wins. The one on the wrong should suffer, right? It almost like there is a, uh, there's a message we all invite. There are certain good messages of messaging what's going on. Uh, off late, we are seeing a lot of movies around people who are marginalized or somebody who's even from a gangster, you know, being eolized or made like almost like heroes, the anti-heroes as you call it. And sometimes I struggle, like, are we just turning around the whole idea of morality or what are we conveying, you know, to the society? Now, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, there are certain subjects that I, I even I struggle with, but then, you know, look at the iconic villains that we had, the, the, you know, the good and the bad that you talk about, the black and the white, which was so obviously clear. Our iconic villains from our past were sort of caricatures, like the Ajits, the Mogambos of the world. Uh, not exactly caricatures, but look at the time period in which these movies were made. The biggest, uh, India was a fledgling country. We were coming to terms with our economy, with our hardships, with our colonial past. We were just discovering stuff like, you know, uh, what we were capable of. So what were our biggest crimes? Smuggling, because, of, you know, the globalization had not yet reached, our borders were closed, we were not getting all the stuff. So our bad guys were the smugglers, anybody who would harm the national interest, which Subhash Gaiji played a lot in almost all his movies. His villains were the foreign guys who were coming with guns, trying to take over things, all his karmas and all who were trying to pass drugs through our country. Who were, they were all harming the nation. Now, over the time as a country has grown, See, what happens, and if you look at the Western cinema, if you look at the literature, the more you grow, more a sense of introspection you get. 
we start looking at ourselves, our society, like looking inwards rather than looking out, outwards. Like if earlier our gentler villains were the Amir Garib villains, Ladki ka Amir Baap, he would be the villain. If it was a sweet Rishikesh Mukherjee movie, if it's a bigger, larger than Shakti kind of life, he would be a smuggler, always, always. So outside influence corrupting our country. Times change. Now we are quite confident of our economy. Then we are able to sit on this pedestal and look at our own society and look at these heroes and anti-heroes in our own society that what have we done we ourselves as a society have done to our people so these gangsters and people that you mentioned mm -hmm. they have come from us these are the product of what we did to our society i think uh, rather than uh, putting them on a pedestal or looking at it with that viewpoint point that we are making heroes out of them or we are trying to you know uh, sensationalize their stories i feel that when a filmmaker or a uh, ram gopal varma who's the master of it all when he looks at these people what he's seeing is a product of a society when he made a company which i absolutely love i love the characterization in that and uh, but when you ask this question of me, my first thought when you were saying this question is like, I see Vivek O'Broy's character and how much empathy I felt for him in this movie. They're all gangsters. They're all killing people. They're all bad guys. But the vulnerability of this character and where he's come from. Hero, uh, heroes and villains are not born. They arise from the circumstances that we have created out of them. I feel if we just don't look at that we have uh, we are making them shine or we're making we're giving them space to say their stories on a cinema screen i think that's the biggest grouse people we people have with this topic is ki ab criminal pe picture banegi aur hum dekhne jayenge but people go and watch it the idea is not that uh, we want you to sit in a theater and applaud when a once upon time ka uh, ajay devgan comes on screen with his wonderful lines written by my mentor Rajat Aroda. So that's not the idea. I think like if you look at it properly, it's the idea that this character, this boy was created in our society, in our lanes, by our circumstances. There were things taken away from him for him to reach to this point. And that's how literature has also uh, uh, grown. In any time period, you pick up Russian literature, you pick up any uh, literature, that it goes more and more introspective, that more and more you start finding faults or creating these anti-heroes out of your own society. We are not, uh, again, an another example from Gangubai I would take, and though you would not see it, it was a discussion that we had on paper, but it made more sense to have a traditional villain. Uh, the character of Sheila Masi, who is uh, Gangubai's brothel madam, who is kind of cruel to her, who's hardened. In my head, when I had written this character on paper, I had written her as a, that she has gone through the same journey that every girl in this brothel has gone through. She has suffered the same highs and lows. She is a product of her circumstances. She's a hardened woman. She, when she's saying these lines, when she says that, like, you know, when Gangu is brutalized by a client, and she says to her, that in our business, it's like in the Forge, 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 it's like in the Forge. She says this very casually. She's just, in her head, her logic makes sense. That is the way that I had looked, this I looked at this character. But uh, when we went on cinema screen, we did feel that audience would want a traditional villain. Audience would want a villain who is bad. There is no justification. There's no reason for it. Mogambo is bad. There is no backstory to Mogambo. It is daddy issues or mommy issues or something happened to Mogambo. It is more we grow in cinema that we try to give a backstory to our characters, try to find the reasons from it because society wants to grow. It wants to reflect on our products and make changes. Uh, it's okay. at least it's my belief and it's cyclically it would change at certain point 
but uh, yeah if you look at it with this lens probably it will be more acceptable <laughs> you know very well very well i think there is unanimity of opinion that at least as far as we as people on the same side of the table are concerned that women are as capable as men and this perhaps needs to be the focus of all education that women can be whatever they want to be now we also realize that each time uh, uttar you know each time a woman kind of stands up for herself she stands up for all women right so i wonder whether when you look at your own role and we know that we seen the emergence of the new narratives as far as ott and netflix and amazon prime etc are concerned with the emergence of these new female led narratives in the media do you think uh, you know that you are as storytellers changing the perception of success for women in 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 the society uh push like um, here i would like to just stress that i have uh, uh, i might be uh, like you know not uh, very much liked by people for saying this but i have never looked at myself when i have gone walked into a room or asked for a job as a woman asking for a job i have always looked at myself as the best candidate available looking for that job that that there is no reason why i should not be taken uh, because i'm a woman or in spite of i'm a woman that has never occurred to me and thankfully the industry that i chose uh, my entertainment industry it is filled with women women are there in every decision making position women are there on the ground it's it's run the show is genuinely in television run by women so uh i have not felt it but probably because that's how i've been uh, raised of course uh, there were limitations put on me as well but not in terms to what i could achieve that was uh, never an issue so um uh so what the the con- when you when you ask about the kind of content coming on ott and it, it changes things well i have my opinions regarding that content and uh, what it works but that is my opinion if it is uh, working for the society if audience is like and i i always believe that you know we don't tell stories or we won't uh, we don't make movies apne liye nahi kar rahe hain hum log as a writer it is finally ultimately has to go to the audience audience decide what works for them if it doesn't work for them you won't get a job next time <laughs> and then your voice gets shut down and suddenly you're really good and it was a fluke but you have to uh, trust the audience so whatever you're seeing coming on ott working if it's working which me- metrics are available for everything more will come of it and if it's not working with the audiences it it's just going to die its own peaceful death so society will choose what they're all right with what they want to see what inspires them uh, what exhilarates them and then we will just continue seeing more and more of it it's how in movies we used to call like formula yep this works make more of it yep. so uh so kutkarsh me let me push that idea forward uh, so you know we have been questioning some of our um stereotypes our beliefs about what is right who is the hero who is the villain you know we are seeing a lot more females coming into you know our female centric roles i will say um at least in the movies and everywhere else which is all uh, which goes a long way in some ways of if you talk about equality um gender equality and you know actual empowerment the question is what are the other narratives that you think we should focus on i mean as as a storyteller are there other important issues which you feel passionate about and think you know uh, in our movies uh, we need to touch on some of the other issues uh see professor the thing is again that our industry follows a formula like whatever it, it's like any industry if the product is selling we will make more of it and we will try to cash on it as long as it's popular so this female led narrative thing it started with vidya balan movies kahani and all died for a bit then my very dear friend saivan wrote this amazing movie neerja 
uh, which started this whole trend of real life incidents, female protagonists. Then he went on to, because this thing was working, he went on to write Parmanu and I think Gold, like movies like this, which are based on this small, tiny, obscure incidents, which people might have forgotten. But when you put them in space of a cinema, they become like this amazing movies, like incidents like airlift, you read them newspaper headlines. So the whole trend right now is pick up a newspaper headline and make the movie. It, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, okay, I'll, I'll say it. It just makes audience feels that, oh, you know, I'm done with the usual Bollywood fair. This is real. I'm watching something smart and real. This happened. So I'm not watching fluff. It, it gives a little bit of uh, agency to the audience that you're watching good stuff. So as long as it's selling, it will, this trend will continue. Then probably once in a while, um, audience wants this huge pomp and glamour movies like what my mentor, Mr. Bansali makes, and then it will come back. But yeah, right now, it is majority of this real life stories picked from the headline stories trend, which is working. Um, I say that like what we would want to say, again, it's, I'm not making a movie for myself. It's too much of a budget to make a movie for myself. We make it for the audiences, whatever product is selling, we will provide it to you. I am very shameless about saying that, <laughs> that I keep my artistic ambitions at home. I will write it for myself, but as of now, whatever people want to say, we'll do more of it. Right. Very well. So that perfectly brings us to the end of part one of the conversation. Thank you very much, Utkarshini. I can notice that there are a lot many questions as we oh, on the Q&A, but we will perhaps choose for the next about 20 odd minutes some of these. So let me go with the first one. And this is about the intersection between leadership and storytelling. Do you think storytelling, is it the myth of the hero or is storytelling also inherent in galvanizing a community to a cause? Uh, always, like every society uh, at every turning point of their history needs a hero. You cannot galvanize a society based merely on an idea. You need to provide an example. It always happens. When you talk about patriotism, you need examples. You need hero stories like Bhagat Singh. You need hero stories like uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Like, you know, you need he in every phase of life. Like uh, right now, the Russia-Ukraine war is going to give us so many hero stories which are going to be used. I, I can see it. It might sound a little cynical, but I can see it being planted in the news cycle right now. Each side picking up their heroes. You, you will see it. Uh, the only example you need is just like pick up the newspaper and start reading both sides of stories and you will see how this planting starts to work because how else do you motivate uh, your community? You motivate your community by creating a hero amongst themselves. That look at this mother of four children and she was able to achieve this. And this is what she did. We add the myth to the hero. We, we make common man the hero. They have an achievement, but we build a myth around it. We galvanize an entire community around it. And then the community ends up doing something which they never thought was possible. That we did it. They did it because they were inspired by this one soul and it happens in normal society it happens in corporations it happens everywhere that you you do talk about this high school uh, dropout who went ahead and made uh, i don't know what what did he make apple <laughs> and you talk about this uh, uh, college dropout who goes ahead and makes uh, facebook you you build your stories you I don't believe that there is any leader worth talking about if he does not have a myth attached to them. A myth, uh, myth is probably the wrong word. The story is what makes them real, which brings them down to the common community denominator where community is able to associate with them, relate to their struggles, relate to their stories. Why do you think Indra Noe sits in all her important meetings and all her round tables and talks about this story where when she comes back home from work, her mother tells her that uh, ghar mein doodh nahi hai, ja ke doodh leke 
she humanizes herself at that very moment she makes herself the every woman the every mother who has to go and buy milk for her home even while running a corporation and then every woman who is sitting at a desk starts getting the aspirations of the corner office indra yeah. noi could do it because i do it i deal with my maid every day i can also get the corner office i believe that's the power of storytelling yeah it makes things easy yeah incomprehensible <laughs> So, so there's another audience question about how do you initiate a story? It is with an idea you're building, or it's just an incidence that becomes the catalyst. It 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 varies. It always varies for me. Um, sometimes it's an idea, just a thought, something that I have read, and it totally starts inspiring this spiral of thoughts in my head, like. recently i was just reading like it's a very recent example so i'll bring it like probably if i find time i'm going to write something on it i just read about this uh, surrogate mothers in ukraine who are giving birth now and the parents who are in us china uh, some parts of europe are not able to retrieve their children so these are the couples who have waited for years to have children they get these babies from surrogate mothers and the surrogate mother is stuck because she can't escape mm-hmm. she can't escape with the child paperwork issues everything so this woman and baby which was supposed to be a business transaction are now stuck in this bombed out place in a mother and child dynamic because there is no other choice and i and i was reading about this article and my thoughts keep spiring so this is an idea which is inspiring me currently a lot and i might just write a short film over it so yeah society inspires me people around me inspire uh, me always something i read something i see happen a person uh, i get all my ideas from the life life around me yeah or if the producer comes with a big check and idea that works <laughs> also <laughs> yes when he makes the mail go all right so this is this is someone and i know that we have um, some very young leaders who are going to be breaking into a tremendous career the kinds that you were mentioning and somebody is perhaps seeking help in asking how do you introduce stories seamlessly into presentations so as mbas we all know that presentations are an inter- perhaps in almost all walks of life today presentations are a necessary evil and get all of us must go through the trend yes, right absolutely so I, i still do presentations and decks <laughs> so yeah uh, but we just start calling them decks now when you're in the entertainment industry but there's still presentations at the end of it so uh well to this uh, let, me, let me let me just tell you the question oh, it's a nice one yeah it's very well framed so it says this is vinayak rokade by the way and okay. he says how do you introduce stories seamlessly into presentations do you think it is helpful to frame it with let me tell you a brief story dot 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 so they lean to hear the story mm. so when i if you been uh, listening to my presentation here as i would call it i would consider it a presentation um you would have noticed how i have shared personal anecdotes and how i have shared stories i think the moment you say that let me tell you a brief story uh, you sort of instead I, i think you have an opposite effect because then you are cueing something which the audience may or may not be open to but when you use the words like let me share something that happened to me again as a storyteller as a leader you put yourself as part of the community whoever you are presenting to you become part of them i am sharing something that happened to me something that you might relate to it's personal the moment somebody decides to share something personal with you you are always put in this elevated position of being close to this person you you get in responsibility that is when you lean in because nobody would just like share personal stuff with you right you have to be important enough for them to share something personal with you so i i would believe in ikea yeah, if um, i think it would work in any corporate room people like to see humans people don't like to see uh powerpoint slides uh if you're presenting anything you put them with them in that moment that 
whatever you're saying. I have a personal experience related to this, which I would like to share with you. Share personal. These are the keywords which would work. I mean, if they work for me, I always in all my, whenever I'm pitching any ideas, I always try to make it as personal as possible that I have a stake in this story. It has happened to me or it has happened to somebody I know or I relate to it in this particular manner. The ownership that you get out of it. Yeah. Okay. I think um, next, uh, you know, we have two questions that are very similar. One from Arundhati Dave, another from Vaishnavi Agrawal. And the question is, would you say the kind of stories that can be told in Indian cinema expanded in recent years? I think we have touched on it. And would a movie like Gangu Bai would have been uh, would have been possible say 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> you know, I remember the art cinema and the parallel cinema at one point of time. But uh, uh, so yeah, definitely the world has um, Indian cinema's appetite, the coming of Netflix, Indian audiences appetite in Netflix and Amazons of the world has opened up a lot. Uh, uh, we like to see a whole buffet of offerings and we like we have the ability to pick and choose so yes we can now we really have the room to tell a lot of different kinds of uh, stories and yes gangubai did take 10 years to make <laughs> so yeah because when i had written this movie the first time sanjay sir and i had uh, finished writing this movie he was advised by everyone that you know you should make big cinema that's what you're known for don't make something this small. So he went ahead and made Ram Leela, on which I was an associate. Then again, they said, oh, this movie has become a hit. You should just ride the wave. Then came Baji Rao and Padmavat. And every year he would pick up this movie as like, but every year producers start believing him more and budgets were coming in. And finally, now he was in the position that they would give him a budget blindly to make anything. But imagine walking into a room and saying, I'm making a movie on um, uh, sex workers life and give me these many crores the question which is always asked is hero con like mm -hmm. koi hero nahi hai. it's just this girl nahi, but male lead con hai. Koi male lead nahi hai. it's it's just this girl but uh, yeah society has changed he has been able to uh, like you know what I would say what is the, your social leadership term? He's been able to build a social authority. Now he's built a reputation. He's got the social authority that he can ask for this kind of money to tell this kind of story and he gets it. Yeah. So yes, sometimes it does take 10 years to get things done. <laughs> yeah. The best meals are always slow cooked, perhaps. <laughs> so the next one is who are some of the other women leaders who've inspired you in terms of leadership? I remember you did talk about your mom and some of the Gangubai, of course, but who could be some of the others that you could instantly think of? Oh, all, always, always um, Anandi Gopal. Mm. I, I find her story fascinating. India's first woman doctor. I think, my God, what, what, a, what a story she has. As a storyteller also, she inspires me, like what a beautiful layer she has to her story. And then as a woman also, I feel like her achievements have not been highlighted enough. And if you ask me, it's like, there's one story I want to tell, I want to tell her story again. Uh, so, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, my mother, my mother is my uh, biggest influence. Uh, all the women around me, I feel like, Every woman around me has surpassed some uh, <clears throat> personal hardship to be where she is. When I walk into a room and I see a room full of women or half full of women, they're all my heroes because they have had a, a hard journey getting to that room. It's it's some just by the society by doing uh, by being told that you know you can do this. It's not really a dream that a girl should have some uh, from themselves but everybody has fought to be there so yeah we are surrounded by heroes <laughs> yeah nice. um me the next question is from mubarak ali and the question is uh, there are two parts to it 
So one is why storytellers are attractive in life and business. I know it's a big question. <laughs> and the second part is, <laughs> oh, tell us about one of the most compelling research that explains why stories are important for leadership and influence. Um, okay, I, I am. Uh, yeah. Okay, wow. So storytellers are attractive in life and business. Thank you, Mubarak. I, 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 that's, it's been a while since I've heard that. <laughs> but yes, uh, um, I think like everybody likes um, uh, stories more than numbers, I think. Like, you know, if you're just presenting an Excel sheet, unless until you're uh, Jeff Bezos and you're looking at your... Uh, you know, top line, <laughs> you would not be too excited by the numbers, but everybody loves a good story. Everybody loves to be entertained. So that is a part of the attraction. And I'm, I'm sorry, what was the second part of the question? Uh, it is about, can you tell us some recent research that explains why stories are important for leadership and influence? So, uh, oh, the most uh, recent thing that I read and I was like, whoa, uh, it's just a story doing rounds on Instagram and everything. And it's about like Putin's origin story. Uh, I don't know if any of you have come across it yes. as of now, like the soldier walks in, his father walks in and he finds his wife who's like put in a pile of dead bodies and he drags her out and nurses her back to, finds out she's alive, nurses her back to health. And eight years later, Putin is born. Uh, I think that's an ultimate superhero origin story that you, it could be real, it could be planted, but everybody, hero or villain, like he's hero to some and he's villain to some, but uh, whoever looks at, at him as a hero needs to hear that story, right? That's the story. Their hero can't be just born in some regular hospital. That hero needs to, their hero, somebody who's doing such great stuff needs to do this. And that's something that fascinated me. Like immediately I read it and I'm like, wow, this is such a lovely, like, you know, myth generation, like such a lovely plant. Like how, if you ever, like my mom always used to tell me the story about Lal Bahadur Shastri that he used to uh, swim to his school with his bag on his head. And that's an inspiring story that you would love to hear about a leader. Maybe he did it once in his entire lifetime, but that's the myth around which his persona is built, that yeah. this is what he did. The Dalai Lama always has a sui, like you know, a needle next to him when he's eating. He, even if a grain of rice falls, he won't waste it. He'll pick it up with a needle, wash it and eat it. You cannot waste food. You learn all these lessons. So leaders build these stories, most of them true, some of them constructed, but they have to build this myth. But what did this teach me as a child? That, oh, do not waste food. Oh, yeah. if Lal Bahadur Sh uh, uh, Shastri could get to school in such hard circumstances, I am privileged. I should be grateful for the life and education I have and learn yeah. from it. So yeah, these are the instances that I would remember. Putin's being the most recent, as per your question. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been tremendous, but this is what I suggest, Amit, we will have to kind of take a call on the barrage of questions. I think we will just have two last questions, one perhaps from me, which I will read out on behalf of Aditi Bajaj, who's asked this question. And the last one could perhaps be by you, Amit. What are the basics of writing story and is it important to have a protagonist in this story? And this is Aditi Bajaj's question. It's Aditi's, yeah. yeah. Aditi Bajaj. Aditi, you share your name with one of uh, India's foremost and the best uh, editors. I wouldn't say female editors, but uh, yeah, she's one of the best. She's done great work. So yay on that. Uh, basics of writing a story. Very simple. Uh, put your character in a difficult situation. The way that character comes out of that situation defines whether that uh, character uh, is worth being your hero. And um, when the character comes out of that difficult situation, he or she should be changed. They should have learned a lesson. And through their journey, you have learned a lesson. Every story you can break down to this. Any story you pick up in your life from uh, even Jack and Jill went up the hill, you can break it down to this. 
that your protagonist put in a difficult situation coming out of it simple after learning a lesson uh yes like uh, protagonist could be anything these are terms like as i said these are jargon and i in my work i come across a lot of people who love to use terms like conflict hero's journey antagonist protagonist everything and all i always tell to them is that when you read the story were you entertained if they say yes then i tell them that forget about everything else forget about where is the conflict where is act 1 act 2 how is the cliffhanger nothing the ultimate goal of any storytelling is does your audience walk out of that session entertained if you achieve that if they carrying the story with them it's fine break as many rules as you want to there is nothing hard and fast about it entertaining your audience is the most important role oh that reminds me of another you know thing about it's all about entertainment so yeah, it, it is <laughs> that's a business <laughs> so uh i'm picking up a question from megha belkune and she has i think do you pick up real story from the society or create a story i think a part of it you have already answered and i think what she is what is interesting is say some part of a society is perplexed if you are learning from entertainment industry or the industry is showing the facts of the society so yeah see gangubai is the most uh, useful experience uh, example for it uh, we pick up something from the society we build it up in a way that you learn from it which you would not have probably in the normal circumstances probably if you read about her in the book it would not have so we using your senses we using technology we have the means available to us in this storytelling medium to get the lessons to you in a better way with punchy dialogues with good visuals uh with good twists and turns we're holding your attention maybe when you're just turning the pages or when you saw it in newspaper you were doing 20 other things but right now we've got all your senses so yeah we pick up the stories from real life uh and get inspired by various sources and then we try to put it in the most entertaining fashion to you so that something sticks anything whatever sticks with you something sticks super i think just about time thank you very much i am reminded of the quote uh, the hardest arithmetic to master is that which enables us to count our blessings so with greater and greater contribution of women in all walks of life i wonder where we would have been if we did not have the active participation support collaboration of women women in leadership rock so at ashang this size center for leadership we profess and harbor large ticket ambitions for active gender participation and i would say what an exciting discussion for sure from all the angles that you covered it so beautifully so utkarshini excellent nuggets truly utkarshini and uh, excellent moderation professor amit so on behalf of the ashang desai center for leadership it is a pleasure for me to thank you all first and foremost to the leaders out there we've had yet <clears throat> yet another unprecedented turnout thank you very much for tuning in and i hope you had a great time and in conversation with utkarshini today was uh, professor amit nankiolier amit nankiolier and thank you very much professor and we were privileged to have with us today the inimitable utkarshini thank you utkarshini you rock thank you so much for having me thank you so much my personal thank you for agreeing to speak at the ashang desai center <laughs> thank you Bye. as i said you made my mother very happy <laughs> thank you so much thank you thank you personally and thank you viewers for joining us thank you viewers thank you so much thank you